PTFER for a second. Spencer Luganbuehl is going to be guest hosting this week. I will be back later to talk about Naira, but I did want to remind everybody that this is a great time to sign up for our In the Money Plus service, get coverage for the rest of Keeneland, extra shows, special written content on Saturdays, and you're going to get all of our Breeders' Cup stuff as well. You're not going to want to miss it. We uh, gave out a lot of winners last year, expecting more of same, extra podcasts, extra written content, and uh, I recommend that you check it out in the moneypodcast.com slash plus. Sign up today, get the rest of Keeneland and all the way through the Breeders' Cup in the moneypodcast.com slash plus. Coming up on this week's episode of the In The Money Players podcast, I am not PTF. I am Spencer Luganbiel, guest hosting for The Man, The Myth, The Legend. And some guests we have coming on for today, we have Scotty McKeever of Equine Edge coming in to talk the late pick five for Keeneland. We have Drew Coatney of In The Money talking the late pick four with a bonus best bet from Woodbine. Klaus Ebner talking Japan in a couple of races from the Woodbine Stakes on Sunday. And last but not least, if PTF can't host it, he's still going to be on the show. He's talking about Naira with me going over the pick six for Saturday. Folks, it's not too late to sign up for Keeneland's contest action this weekend. You got the fall challenge on Sunday. That's a $400 game. And there's also the BCBC NHC fall handicapping challenge. That's the big one, 3500 on Saturday. You can still sign up by reaching out to Jim Goodman. Probably the easiest way to get all this information is to visit our pretty link in the moneypodcast.com slash Keeneland. Get the links to those. Figure out uh, on this, the big event. You can play online. I'm not sure about the Sunday event, honestly, but click on those links. You'll be able to figure that out for yourself. And if you're looking to be at Keeneland, you know, they have limited attendance. You're going to want to buy tickets in advance. Go to Keeneland.com to get all of that information. And now I'd like to welcome in my first guest for this In The Money Media Players podcast. He's a man who I've had this on Redboard Rewind. He's someone who I have enjoyed using his equine edge technology for horse racing. It's Scotty McKeever. Scotty, how are you today? I'm doing good, Spencer. How are you? I'm doing all right. Glad to uh, be have you back on one of the In The Money Media shows and super excited to talk this uh, late pick five at Keeneland. What, uh, what have you noticed so far from just playing Keeneland in the short time that they've been open so far? You can't really come from too far back, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, either on the turf course or on the dirt, especially on the dirt. You've got to be somewhat close uh, in the races. So it, speed has been holding a lot. Let's jump right into this first race. It's race number six from Keelan. A maiden special weight, 84,000 is the purse. One on one sixty eight miles on the turf course. What'd you like in here, Scotty? Well, I'm going to use two horses. Uh, I'm uh, The four horse curbstone is a horse I'm going to use. I, I'm, I'm hoping this horse can rate some. They added blinkers last time out uh, on uh, Curbstone and uh, Santana J Jr. jumps aboard as well. So, you know, it's 16 percent of our numbers. It's a top Scotty pick algorithm. It's four to one on our Equine Edge morning line. So, uh, you know, it, it looks like uh, it really improved second time out. And uh, I think you're going to see a better effort here. Went up at 14 to one last time out for Brendan Walsh. I like Curbstone. Um, Bickel is a, is a horse I kind of like a little bit. The six horse has a really good genetic strength rating. I think the, the workouts have been sneaky good. And I think that horse might uh, run a decent race. So um, I'm going to go Bickel. So those two horses, four and six. I think for me, just to go over Curbstone real quick, he'll be a B for me. I just don't like uh, Santana so much on the turf anymore. For me, he's much more of a dirt jock. And seeing Louie jump off, I just think there's a little bit of a difference there. 14 to 1 last time out, like you said. And sometimes second time blinkers, people always see blinkers on in the PPs, but it's never second time blinkers. That can sometimes be a nice, interesting angle. I'm, I'm with you with Bickle. I think that this one, uh, Bayern 50%, two-year-old, first-time starters. I just think uh, the family in general, first-time starting two-year-olds uh, on the turf, three for 15, is – what Kelsey Danner has been so far with a positive ROI. He's a half to old time hockey who made $450,000 on the turf. I, I just feel like this one as a first time starter will be definitely interesting. That'll be my top pick faith runner. The number 10 so far, I just like the improvements. First time turf 
face the next time out winner. This is one that I'm going to have to use as well. And the number 11 wicked genius will be my lone B 13% turf route for wicked strong, which is in par with his dirt numbers as a sire. I just think that's a little bit interesting. The family is 0 for 18 turf route, but the last time out first time turf just missed by a length at 17 to one. This is one I'm definitely going to have to use as well. Let's this is a on. very, very tough race. I mean, this, this uh, opening for the, uh, for the pick five is, is really tough. I mean, there are a lot of horses in here you could use. So we haven't seen the scratches yet, obviously. So, you know, that, that'll, you know, kind of clear things up a little bit. But uh, this one deserves a look. The the 12 horse Freedom's Way, those aren't bad workouts. This horse is bred for turf for Eddie Keneally as well. You could use Freedom's Way. Um, Heir to Greatness, the, who's going to be the 13, hopefully gets in there. That one for Albert Stahl, that's a first time starter. You know, uh, Curbstone, second time blinkers is the thing I use. That wasn't a particularly strong race the horse ran in, but you've got a lightly raced horse. So, uh, and I agree with you with Santana on the turf, but uh, it was in a wide open race I and mean, you can't use them all. And so I went with those horses, but if you've got the money to do it, definitely spread and hopefully we'll be able to clear things up in some of the other legs and, and maybe you can use more horses in the first leg. Let's move on to race number seven. It's another maiden special weight. This time we're going on the dirt, a mile and one sixteenth. What are you liking here, Scott? Well, big city. First of all, there's really no pace in this race, mm -hmm. right? So make sure you judge it from that perspective. I'm looking at our new pace number that we have that will be launching soon. And uh, it's it's a really good number. And it's saying that this race is wide open. So, you know, look at that. Look at horses maybe that are far back and know that they're going to be closer to the pace. Big city mama, the one horse is a horse I'm looking at. That's uh, and, and I considered singling this horse, but it, it looks like a wide open race. But um on paper anyways but this is maybe the type of race you would take a chance on and if you were big city mom with a one horse sovereign appeal the two horse has been right there as well and uh and burned a little bit of money but dueled last time out this one could find itself on the lead and go gate to wire i, I like the one and two best big city mama and sovereign appeal but if you used all the horses in there but the four horse rocket on board who i think is the only horse that can't compete in here um you probably be you know you're you're going to win the race I, I think just overall, and this being one of the shorter fields of the sequence, you kind of have to get narrow. If, if you're going four or five deep, then you're four or five deep pretty much in every leg and your ticket's going to be astronomical. I am going to single the number two Sovereign Appeal when I just look over. And like you said, there is no pace in the race. Uh, Adam Bacheza knows how to get on the rocket and do well on the front end. And this one, second last time out and dueled. Sometimes when you see that PP line and they come back next time out, they just end, seem to end up just hanging on and just pushing away all the other speeds. You know, the other one, too, Spencer, is this uh, Street Missy, the five horse. It's actually the Scotty Algorithm's long shot. And this one's been far back, but there's not that much pace in here. So this one will be closer to the pace and has been facing much, much better horses. So on the drop here, um, it doesn't look like a drop. But when you look at it from our, our, our figures, mm -hmm. this horse is getting much easier here. So I, I wouldn't leave out Street Missy, the, the five. So I, I'm going to probably cover those three horses. Let's move on to race number eight. It's the one of the biggest races of the day. It's the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup. One and one miles on the turf. Kind of hard to stay away from the Chads. What do you like in here, Scotty? God. Well, Chad Brown and, and Flavian Pratt are 39% jockey trainer combination. The Equine Edge Morning Lines, four to one. It's Scotty's second pick. Um, Empress Josephine, the four horses, probably the horse I'm going to I'm gonna key in on because uh, this one's been off since October, but Aiden O'Brien, John Velasquez, they do very well together. And uh, this one in the first lady over at Keeneland um, just came back and run a heck of a race. And I think this is an easier competition than what this horse has been facing. So Empress Josephine is the horse to beat for sure. I think when you just look overall in this race, and I always hear it from my friends, you know, if you're going to play one Chad Brown, you got to play them all. I'm going to try and beat technical analysis. I think that the last two races being at Saratoga, I'm going to try and play. Maybe the form isn't improving. Maybe it was also just liking the Saratoga course. I'm all about Flavian Pratt with Chad Brown. I think Flavian Pratt, everyone says Irad's number one jockey in the country. I think it's Flavian. And I think that, like you said, 39%, nothing to miss there, has improved every single race since coming over and also can run, can run everywhere. Belmont, Arlington, Monmouth, overseas, obviously. This is one I'm definitely going to be using. Empress Josephine. Everyone knows Aiden O'Brien and me are not best friends. I just think that when he comes over the pond, he uh, just doesn't win. This one ran third last time out. Let me spy a length. 11 to 1. 
I'll kind of take those odds because after he won the uh, the Breeders' Cup race, obviously finishing in the top three, I think that if you're going to take longer shot prices with his horses, that is one way to go. One last one for me, the number 10 closing remarks, Umberto Raspoli for Carla Gaines. Just another one slowly improving. Two low 90 buyers out of the last four races, obviously improved second time out off the layoff. We all know how good third time off the layoff is, and I feel like with this one and having Umberto on there, we always talk about on the turf that maybe those two are the top two jockeys on that surface. Definitely one that I want to include as well. And closing remarks had traffic in that last race in the Del Mar Oaks over at Del Mar and, and got a, and, and really closed nicely and had a ton of traffic and lost to a good horse too. So I, I think closing remarks is a, is a big player in here. I would agree. Um, Shanta Sara, of course, that you, you talked about uh, the Irish spread, Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt. Um, this one barely won against a much easier group of horses. So I wasn't sure what the class level is for this horse, but fourth time in this country. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised by that one. This is a really, another. this card is tremendous at Keeneland on Saturday. So, um, but yeah, in the Queen Elizabeth here, uh, I'm going to say Empress Josephine's the horse to beat. I think I would agree with you. I, I would always play against Aiden O'Brien horses coming here, but he's been doing better of late with uh, with these shippers. So we'll see what happens there. Another horse um, maybe to look at is the Scotty Longshot Algorithms Queen Goddess, because this horse actually a much easier group, allowance group, but broke through the gate prior to the start and still managed to win that race with a really tough trip. So I don't know if Queen Goddess is this good, but you're going to get a price. Let's move on to the next race, that being race number nine. It's an N1X allowance, one mile. What are we looking here, Scotty? You know, I don't know. Is Ducali uh, the type of horse that, you know, stretching out for the first time, that was a, a, a good group of horses on our um, strength of race figure. This is a much easier group. Dual last time out from the inside. You know, the horse is rated before going seven eighths, uh, two races back, back breaking his maiden. But, you know, I don't know what to think about this horse st uh, stretching out. Will this horse relax? You know, I'm not sure. Six to five on the Equine Edge morning line, 38% to win. Top Scotty pick. Uh, as far as our algorithm goes, um, winter pool, the four horse. I mean, this one won easily last time out, only has five lifetime races, been in the money in four of them. Uh, there seems to be some upside there. Chad Brown, Jose Ortiz. So, of course, they're they're tough as well. Looks their jockey trainer combination. Let's see here. Um, they're 24 percent, you know, not as good with Flavian Pratt, who's 39 percent with Chad Brown. But um, a lot of people are probably going to single Ducali. Probably. Uh, I'm not so sure. You know, I, I I did. I will say this preliminarily. I've used the one, two, four, five, nine, ten. I've eliminated the three, six, seven and eight. So uh, that's where I'm at right there on there. I, Ducali, I'm not sure about. I have to look at it a, a little bit more in depth. Uh, another horse maybe to look at is Malibu Star, the one. Uh, this one got a second place finish last time out, getting a little bit tougher, but has been off a little bit of a layoff. And Kelly Bream is good with these types of horses. John Velasquez. So that horse might run run decent. If you had to break them down by A's and B's, what would you, would you break them down as right now? Uh, Ducali for sure, and um, and Winter Pool. So it would be five and four for sure would be my A's, and then Malibu Star would be uh, would be a B, and then I would go down to the the two nine ten. For me, I feel just Winter Pool Ducali. Like we had said, we we don't know off the stretch out what's exactly going to happen with Ducali. I, I want to take that shot. I think Brad. Obviously, we know how good they are. There, I think there was a stat that was dropped on Twitter a couple of days ago where. 41% of the grade ones have been won by four trainers, one of them including Brad Cox. So obviously Brad knows how to get a horse ready to stretch out and also just, you know, become a better horse. I like Florent jumping on. I think he's a very underrated, aggressive jockey that, you know, sometimes he may, does make the wrong move, but I'd rather have an aggressive jockey than a non-aggressive jockey. Winter pool for, Ch for Chad Brown and Jose Ortiz. Back-to-back -back 91s, obviously those being in the starter races. This is the one where I would almost want to rather just play Ducali and then go to winter pool as a B, but I'm going to use them both as A's back to back 91s. Hopefully we'll see another improvement or a step forward in this race as well. Yeah. You know, it's tough when you've got these lightly raced horses, if they're, I mean, this horse has been right there in every start except its first one. And when you see horses like this that are improving like this, you, you just don't know what the upside is. And so you want to catch them on the way up and winter pool is kind of um, in that, in that mold so uh ducali if, if ducali falters probably winter pool is the horse to beat but i don't think this is that tough of a race uh, or, or strong of a race but uh, that's why i was maybe going to spread out uh with with uh maybe not singling ducali but i don't the horse to beat for sure is ducali no doubt about it let's move on to race number 10 it's an n2x allowance five and a half on the turf what are we like in this closing leg scotty i, I told you this it, 
Spencer, this race, look at, I, you know, Chili Petten is the is the four horse, probably the horse to beat. The three horse, Ghosting Kim. Uh, this one isn't bad. I mean, you could see this horse uh, running well here, the three. I've used the one, three, five, 11, 12. I don't have an A in here. I, I really don't. I think I will say this, the 12 horse, Sarah C. If this horse can get a good trip, I don't love the, the 12 hole, but this one has some speed. Cutting back, showing speed, going longer in a grade three race. That was a much, much tougher field than here. And um, and then cutting back here, this horse can rate, be on the lead, do anything. So Sarah C in a wide open race for Wayne Lucas, uh, David Cohen's aboard. This one could surprise. Social chatter, the um, it, it maybe is a horse to 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 use as well. I think just piggybacking off of you for social chatter, just the, the fact the opening race, you know, the debut race was a 79 buyer for this one. I just kind of feel, you know, now coming back, they go in the slop, doesn't go well. Now we have a 71 and a 77. Maybe this one's now cycling back into form. Maybe we can see a new top come out. If there is a new top, this one fits in really, really well with this group as well. Tilly Petten for me, we all know Wesley Ward and what Johnny V do together. This one obviously went to the Albany across the pond came back one an optional 50 then went into a stake and then another and then won an allowance or ran second in allowance i just chili petten for me social chatter those are the two you said you had a bunch of beats can you narrow any down to an a um no i, I think this race is that tough i will say this the the front the social chatter if i was going to pick one horse in here to bet it would be social chatter as my as my top play i i think the horse is very fast the horse can rate as well um, the, the three horse ghosting Kim, I think this one can run good too. Might get the pace as well and getting the extra, getting a cutting back from six furlongs. It wasn't a great trip last time out and they went slow up front. So I, I think this one's going to have to come from behind, but at eight to one on the, uh, on the morning line, I think, uh, 12 to one an hour morning line, but James Graham jumps aboard. I, I think ghosting Kim, but I probably, probably the one horse social chatter. A lot of differing opinions for me and you. Let's hope we can cash a ticket. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, good luck to you this weekend. All right. Yeah. Good luck to you as well. And everybody out there, it's uh, it, th these are opportunities. I, I, they're tough. You have to narrow them down. You have to look at the scratches and just see what happens. But it, these are, I like these tough cards. And if you're right about the decisions you make, you just have to have some conviction. You, you find a horse or two that you like and have some conviction. If it wins, great. If it doesn't, you move on to the next one. Can't agree with you more. Thanks so much, Scotty. All right. Thanks, Spencer. Join the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation on October 21st for a horse show like no other. Gather your friends and family at 8 p.m. Eastern for a live stream to see, hear, and feel the profound impact that the retired racehorses of the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation have made on countless lives through the TRF Second Chances Program at the Lowell Correctional Institution in Ocala, Florida. Visit trfinc.org for more information. And if you're here in Lexington, come join me. I'll be hosting a viewing party at Mirror Twin. We'll be gathering at 6.30 over there. $10 suggested donation, but I'll make up most of that because I'll buy you a beer if you come up and tell me you heard about it on the show. So you're going to want to come join us there and go to trfinc.org for more information. And now I'd like to welcome in my second guest for this In The Money Players podcast. It is none other than Drew Cotney of In The Money Media. Drew, how are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? It's been a long time we've been on the airwaves together. It, it has. But it's been too long. Too long for that. Glad that when he was like, oh, you're going to have Drew on. I'm like, fantastic. I haven't talked to Drew in like, I don't know, half a year, six months. That's, I, I think I think we may be over that. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's good to see. I didn't get to make it up to Saratoga this year. So mm -hmm. was bummed that we didn't have uh, Bloody Marys at the Brentwood together. Oh, I mean, that was that was the kiss of death for me when Pete's like, hey, do you want to come on the Brentwood show? I'm like, I guess so. And he's, he's like, Bloody Marys. I'm like, just a Pilsner for me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <clears throat> We're going to talk the late pick four for Woodbine, but you actually have a best bet in the race prior to that. So uh, kind of give us your rundown here on Woodbine race six, a uh, just maiden claiming 40,000, five and a half on the synthetic. Yeah, I mean, this pick five sequence is unbelievable. And I think, I think you'll be able to get paid because it just doesn't feel like a lot of the logicals are going to win. I'm going to go with uh, in this race here, an outside runner, the number 12 Demi Gorgon, um, which I think last time stalked that pace a little too closely and made, I love seeing these young horses just bring themselves into the race, going wide around turns, 
only to come up short. And this horse is massive too. You just see physically how tall this horse is compared to some of the other runners. And was just, again, too hot to that pace. The eventual winner came from way off of it. And getting the Lasix added, I think, should be able to help with the foundation in the second off. And I think it's significant, too. Now Rafia Hernandez shows back up and gets on this horse. Moran got the debut call, Hernandez being the better jockey. Love the wide trip because I think this horse is going to just relish in that and has some good feelings to this one. So I'm going to go with that runner, the number 12. Demi Gorgon at six to one. A couple others I had to use were the number six Olympic fencer ran a, uh, a decent enough debut catching the gate pretty good on the way out, kind of brushing against it and then had to rush up uh, to the lead pack around the turn and then stalled out a bit as the loose leader had an easy go of it. So addition of Lasix, extra furlong to run into uh, might be able to help there as well. And then number 10 loaded Vixen. Everyone will see all those ones in the running lines and the cut back here and think this speedster will get loose. I'm actually against this runner here. So I just think loaded Vixen's a trap play and I'm going to be fading. So I'm big on the 12 and the number six Olympic fencer in this race here. Let us move on to race number seven. It is a maiden special. 126,000 is the purse one mile on the turf course. What would you like in this one, Drew? Yeah. And before the Twitter people start adding me, Race six, the number six, is going to a half furlong more, not a full furlong. So apologies for my speech there. Um, race seven here, there is a little rain forecasted. And Jeff Bratt was on the show uh, last weekend uh, talking with us and said, hey, the inner turf course is built uh, more recently, has better drainage. The outer, not as good, a little older. E.P. Taylor may get rained off is likely the first one to go if rain does come. So just keep an eye on that. This one is scheduled for the outer, so it's just a bit more vulnerable in terms of being rained off. Okay, so to the picks after that. I'm going with the bomb, the 20-1, to 1, uh, number four of Bartica. Um, and and there's, a, there's a heck of a story we can weave, and I love these type of events where you can tell a story to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that, that debut closing into the slow fractions – and still earning a 60 buyer, really significant to me, especially at the sprint distances. So disadvantageous to try and close in uh, to in those sprint distances, let alone into the slow fractions we're seeing on time form US. Last out tried stretching out, but was forced off the tor turf and didn't run a stretch. So I think there's reason to believe today that we can build off that foundation that was set on that debut of 60 buyer. And second, there's some inside runners that look like they're going to hook up and collapse. I have my value line at six to one. I'm looking my chops at 20 to one. A couple others I'll be using are the number one stylish jet. Might just get loose, so I'm not holding that one uh, and saying there's going to be an absolute pace collapse. I'll use a little bit on side. The number six, the Lament. I mean, Cassie Stein stays aboard, uh, which is a bit surprising considering that pretty bad ride last out. And so I'll be, I'll be giving them another try if Cassie still has confidence in Stein on that runner. And then the number nine rapper zapper, same story as mostly above, way too wide earlier. So uh, by above, I mean the number six, Lamette, the, the horse I just discussed. So I, I'm going with the, the four and the one as A's and backups as the six and the nine on this one. We're almost pretty much the same in this kind of race. I, I agree with you with Lament. That's going to be my top pick in the race, 57 last time out for Stein. Stein to me has always been one of the underrated jockeys. When you look at Woodbine, you think of all, a couple other guys above him. I, I like that Cassie sticks with him here. Obviously, Cassie, two year olds, 16%, always been a good turf trainer as well. And 21% with a positive ROI, having Stein in the irons. Always nice to see when they do jump back aboard. Ready for the lady on the outside for Roger Atfield. Just the fact that after the really, really nice run, quote unquote, got the fast pace. He was a little bit farther back in the, in the debut and then right into the summer. And, you know, obviously that's a big jump up for, for a horse like this 47 to one, uh, the improvement. This one for me is going to be the other a, just because I don't want to be wrong yeah. on this one. So I'm going to use that as well. You talked about rapper zapper, him and Daniel son are pretty much just the same type of horse. To me, I'm using them both as backups blinkers on for Daniel son coming back. Both of these horses improved second time out as well.
Yeah, and one thing to comment on the number ten ready for the, the lady um, that that summer sticks with Alba here in Grafton Street. Uh, Alba here is a great, great horse and ran a great, great race in there uh, shipping in. So I I kind of put an asterisk next to that because to your point, hey, look, pretty strong fire ran was a million to one in that day and one was bet to a reasonable price, ran reasonably well. And again, I think we could all tell ourselves a story. And I may be using this one as you as you talk about number 10 ready for the lady at four to one is, hey, it got washed off on the view. That's not where the horse wanted to be. Horse ran into some monsters in the summer stakes and now drops back into a reasonable company level. And oh, by the way, has a heck of a bullet workout last out as yeah. well. So uh, I think I might be using that horse as we just talked live about it here. Let's go on to race number eight, a maiden special weight mile and an eighth on the synth. What are we like in this one, Drew? Uh, you started because I can go a million directions. Uh, <laughs> and and I, 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 yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, for me in this one, I'm using the outside horse, the nine city legend, just like the last time out was on the fast pace. Obviously those type of horses always fade in the end. And it was at this distance as well has slowly been improving for Barbara Minshall. I think the fact for me, this one went off at 10 to one last time and showed speed. But the key factor for me is that already has raced at the distance once before. I'm only going to use one other in this race. The number one moon quest for Mark Cassie. I mean, they went to the turf. Last time out, didn't run as well. The first two races, a 62 and a 66 on the synth, seemed just fi pretty fine for me. Uh, first time gelding as well. I think those are the only two you have to use. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you have to look at this race and go, wow, September 18th is going to be really key to understanding how this whole race is going to unfold. And I do think the number three, Bolu and the other speedster in here as well are going to hook up again. And I think we're going to see in city legend, your horse are going to see the exact same thing. I I'm a firm believer that we're going to see a horse coming from off the pace, either a stalking rail trip or really far back in a wide trip. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to stick with the number six master McGrath. I think um, that this horse at five to one was a little puzzling. Um, and if you want to go back and watch a funny replay, uh, track announcer Geller gets a little confused at <laughs> the top of the stretch. Perplexed. He wasn't confused. He understood everything. Was perplexed. Because there were runners, and I'm not exaggerating, making the turn as they were crossing the wire. That's how different the ability levels of that maiden event was. So Riptide Rock obviously comes back and does great things uh, in some stakes races this year at Woodbine. And Master McGrath was off of that pace and ran into it. And that pace held together uh, extremely well. All the top three were in the top three rankings at the first call and the second call. So, right, I'm going to give Matt, Master McGrath a little bit of a, a of a bump up there. And I think this horse is going to be able to stalk. Kamara stays aboard, gets a freshening, some strong works, right? The whole rigmarole three-year-old, plenty of upside left. So without belaboring that point, number six, Master McGrath, I think is a sneaky one if you really dissect and understand. The number five Maritime Mission, again, another great replay. I, we, we, we were able to grasp onto. Two back got stuck on the rail. I, I have a hunch there was an instruction that said, if you give up the rail, I'll never put you on another horse again. <laughs> and, and Stein's conviction just stayed up on that rail, got into a duel, and complete pace collapse. And then last out, I think we could give it an excuse because we just couldn't find running room late. And so I think this one could find some really, if kids are lucky, could be stalking those two speeds uh, that are going to get out of the lead, as we mentioned before. And then lastly, I'm going to use defensively Enchant Me. Last out through a complete clunk clunker. Just too many hiccups getting checked farther and farther back. Needs to find that clear running room and is a grinder one tile one style type. But I like that Contreras is getting aboard to pilot this one for a bit more clean of a trip. The value line's at eight to one. I'm not betting this horse at nine to two, but it's interesting. So with my dissertation over on a maiden <laughs> nine furlong event here, I'm on the six, five, and two. Uh, hard leans on the six and the five. I think it's go over with Maritime Mission as well. Did improve very nice next time out as well. Did get the fast pace being a little bit farther back, but nice to see that you have, you know, this one can either go out in front or can also close from the back as well. 
let's move on to race number nine. A maiden claiming 25, 23,000, five and a half on the synth. What are we like in here? Yeah, I, I, I'm down to two horses. And it's funny that <laughs> if you like the uh, the speed and fade types that are getting a cutback, this is your race. Because I think there's like a handful of them in here. And I'm going with the number eight. Uh, Chancel of four to one ran two decent efforts over the all weather surface. One of which was tending to a hot pace off a pretty long layoff and the two turf tries uh, were lackluster. So we'll excuse those. And we're horse hoping this horse waits back up, getting back onto the synthetic, the all weather uh, value line stands at four to one for me. I think we're going to see that price. And the other horse I'm going to be using is number two, red maple. Um, I think this might be the best speed and fade type we saw and be better suited for the five furlongs we're going to get here today. Um, so I, I'm on those those two runners, the eight and the two. Um, and uh, I've said five furlongs, I'm at five and a half furlongs. So just a smidgen of cut back off of the six that number two Red Maple had been running before. Uh, I'm on you with Chancel as well. Just the fact that I think people, you know, they look at those last couple of races. And for me, I'm someone who works bottom up compared to top to down. When looking at the PPs, and I feel like people will just see this horse hasn't run well in the last two and instantly, you know, digress and toss out for the beginning yeah. type of handicapper. You really have to look at what surfaces they're running well on. This one, you know, 57, 36. I guess the one, two back kind of fits in with the 62 and 61, but obviously I think we know which surface this one wants to be on and we'll be excited to see fourth time off the layoff. We all know about how third time off the layoff. Now we're getting kind of into a form cycle with this one. I think a 62 might be able to get it done. One that I'm going to actually put on top here, and it's uh, it's a little out there. Pass the pudding, please. Just the race is two and three back. The 61 with Jay Scott on now gets Fukumoto on, who I who I have a lot of respect for. This one has been racing at this level for a long time, but I just wonder if you know this one had showed a little bit of speed in that race and has a very fast time form figure at the five and a half. I just wonder if this one can't be a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, no, I agree, and I. And, and this is good ticket structure conversation as well, not to dwell on it too much, but if we're going to play a pick five or a pick four, I, I believe there's value in using the all button in race eight and race nine because they're they're just so hard to, to, to distinguish. And I don't think we're going to see clear standout favorites. So just from a conservation of capital standpoint, feel f- I would not bash anyone for using an all a weighted all in eight and nine with our leans pressed up one or two more times. Um, just to try and score out because they're just so tough. I mean, all the things you've said I've agreed with and want to be using in some degree, but sometimes it's just simpler. Look where your strong opinions are. Race six, seven, and 10, which we'll talk about here in a second. Strong opinions. Make sure we're covering our eight and nine where our weak opinions are if we're going to play in those horizontal pools. Move on to race number 10 from Woodbine. It is an allowance race going one one sixteen miles on the inner what do we like in this one, Drew, to count us out? Yeah, I'm 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 on the number 10 English Conqueror. I think it's just gonna be tactical on the speed, be close up to it. Yeah, two turns gets me a little worried about a longer grinder style. Uh has ran well as a three-year-old over the inner already. And uh so I don't love doing this where you're looking for a closer tactical horse going on the inner, but I think I'm going to side with English Conqueror because I think the class and the buyers earned overall will get this job done for the favorite in this race, the number 10 English Conqueror. The other horse, though, I will be using is um, My Sea Cottage, which paints a nice picture, especially for a horse coming from Ireland with uh, Gary Barber as well with the owner. Makes me think, I wonder what his Sea Cottage looks like. Uh, wherever his vacation houses uh, likely reside. But I think the the number eight, My Seed Cottage, makes a lot of sense for Cassie as well. Um, last out was stuck in that merry-go-round pace with some really nice horses and two back off. The long break made that first move into the hot pace and couldn't find, couldn't fend off any weight runners. So I, I'm on the, the 10 with a backup of the eight in this race. Uh, for me, uh, it's all about English Conqueror. For me, I mean, the last two races in the grade one and grade three, obviously the grade one, fourth by 11, but that buyer figure sure does stand out. And, and then the sink spiel, the 90. I just think this one is improving at the right time and obviously probably likes to go a little bit longer, but I'm willing to take a shot here on this one to close out. I think that sometimes as well, like people try to, you know, get off that 80% single on the ticket that everyone's going to have, aka Gamine. 
Pharaoh, all those types. And sometimes you just need to find the right other single to have as well in this race, like you had with the 12 earlier on for the pick five. I, I have one single and then I'm too deep in all the rest of the legs. It's going to be a super skinny ticket for me. I'll probably punch this one four or five times. If I do that and I'm still right about the single, I, to me, I'm still making money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and don't be confused as well with the 11 legs back finishing fourth to a horse named Walton street who three back uh, ran against Mishriff uh, and some other very classy horses overseas. So, you know, if, if you're a class type of handicapper, uh, don't overlook number 10, English Conqueror's abilities. Corelli as well was running some great races. Desert Encounter. I mean, the, the list goes on with the the amazing ability of this horse. But then but then you look back at the three-year-old campaign, though, and I'll say this in hushed tones. Some of the other runners in here have already beaten this horse. So it makes you wonder, like, what, what happened along the training campaign that made this one – able to jump up. I think, I think this horse will run a good race, uh, but there are some question marks and I, I'm curious to see how, how much this horse gets bet because if you start to see below even money, I think in horizontals, we play it, but in the wind pools, I think we may stay away. So value sits at like three to two, we'll say roughly speaking, but uh, what a perplexing horse that I think is going to be a great addition of this race to watch. Super excited to see how this single ends up for me and for you as well. That's all the time we have for you, Drew, today. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank you. See you, Spencer. Speaking of contests, want to remind folks about Naira's contest schedule. $300 live bank roll events coming up the next three Saturdays, the 16th, 23rd, and 30th. This is a great way to cut your teeth in live bankroll play, great way to win and play along the way, especially maybe if you're thinking of uh, competing in an event like the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge. For more information, go to nairabets.com and click on their contest tab. That URL, once again, nairabets.com. And now for my next guest on the show, I want to welcome back someone who I never thought I'd see on this show again. But if it's not me on the show, it's got to be him, Klaus Ebner. Klaus, how are you today? Good, Spencer. How are you? Good hanging in there. Glad to have you back on the show. I know we haven't talked in quite a while. Excited to talk about some racing over in Japan and also at Woodbine. Kind of just give me the rundown. What's going on with Japan racing right now? Yeah, so we really kind of restarted the the, the fall and winter season now. So kind of, uh, you know, the back half of the season where, you know, this is kind of just like the Breeders' Cup in, in the U.S. or the bigger races in the U.S. where, uh, you know, championships are determined. So this is exactly what's happening now in Japan. Uh, so last week we had, or two weeks ago rather, we had the, the Sprinter Stakes. Uh, this week we're going to have the last jewel of the Phillies Triple Crown, and we'll see the uh, the unicorn, uh, as they call it, everyone calls her Sodashi, the uh, the bright white filly that everyone's kind of fallen in love with, uh, not only in Japan but also around the world. So, um, you know, she is the uh, the headliner, if you will, uh, on the card on Saturday. I, I it's going to be tough to see her lose to, uh, see her lose that race on Saturday. She you know she was she prepped in a uh, Grade Two against older horses. Uh, she actually beat Loves Only You. That's going to be a form reference for us in North America as well, because Loves Only You actually is going to go to the Philly Mare Turf to her next start. So, um, again, we'll, we'll see how good she really is on, on Saturday, but I, I think she's the real deal and she'll be tough to beat. With Sadashi, is this kind of almost Rachel and Zenyatta territory for how much people love the horse? Yeah. And, and, and the fact that she's bright white, right? That's just the, the sort of thing. It just, you know, it just sparks the imagination. Uh, I was talking to, to Pete about that before, and you know, just everyone in Japan is going crazy about her uh, merchandise uh, everywhere. You can see it's it's rare. You know, you're seeing stuff on eBay selling for hundreds of dollars in terms of you know her little figurines and uh, other little things. So yeah, it's Sadashi Mini in Japan, that's for sure. We got to get the USA on on the plushy train because I see those all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, Why do we not have this? I mean, we we need to, we need to get someone even like. For the bigger horses, you know, even the ones that have retired, like I can't imagine people wouldn't want to own their own plushy collection of Pharaoh and Zenyatta and Rachel and all those horses. I think it's just a great idea that I think we're just not doing right now. And Japan's doing it the right way. Uh, so, Spencer, I think if you and I have some cash reserved, uh, let's look at that together and we'll get into the uh, plushy horse business together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> about two races now for Woodbine on Sunday. We have the EP Grade 1 Taylor and the Grade 2 Neartic. Yeah, so though so the EP Taylor before, at least in the past, you, you sort of had you said the, the three races of the Arctic, 
uh, E.P. Taylor and the Canadian International. Mm -hmm. But now we've kind of switched around this a little bit with, with COVID. So we try things out with having the International on the same day as the Woodbine Mile. But we do now have the E.P. Taylor running uh, kind of on its own as a unique event. Um, the card has not been drawn yet, so we'll still. We're, I think it hasn't been drawn yet. We're gonna wait and see who we, who we uh, have in the field. Uh, but usually, you know, it's gonna be a stellar card on the weekend. Some good turf racing, and, and an interesting note on the undercard is with the Great Two in the Arctic is the fact that Town Cruise, you know, he was the the shock winner of the uh, Woodbine Mile. Uh, the connections originally said, okay, we're gonna ship him to Del Mar. We're gonna take our chances against the big boys, but uh, they have kind of had a change of heart. Uh, the horse is still, you know tearing down the bar and so they're going to take, take their chance of running it back in the sixth furlong in the arctic now so uh again uh some familiar faces there and one that will probably be probably the favorite in that race super excited to look at that car when it's finally drawn i think ptf and uh, andrew are going to be doing a special sunday show as well to go over some of those races as well klaus thank you so much for coming on talking with me some japan and woodbine racing as always no problem Spencer. have a great day Folks, it's not too late to sign up for Keeneland's contest action this weekend. You got the Fall Challenge on Sunday. That's a $400 game. And there's also the BCBC NHC Fall Handicapping Challenge. That's the big one, $3,500 on Saturday. You can still sign up by reaching out to Jim Goodman. Probably the easiest way to get all this information is to visit our pretty link in the moneypodcast.com slash Keeneland. Get the links to those. Figure out uh, on this, the big event. You can play online. I'm not sure about the Sunday event, honestly, but click on those links. You'll be able to figure that out for yourself. And if you're looking to be at Keeneland, you know, they have limited attendance. You're going to want to buy tickets in advance. Go to Keeneland.com to get all of that information. And now I'd like to welcome in my final guest for the show. Of course, he had to make an appearance even after having me uh, guest host. It is PTF El Presidente. How are you today, Pete? I'm doing very well, Spencer. Thank you for sitting in the chair. Uh, I hear you're doing a great job, and it's it's nice. I'm on the road. It, uh, we're going to call this this new location the, the Borman Lair in Lexington, um, far from the Brooklyn Bunker, but uh, a place after my own heart. Anywhere that has four screens showing racing, I feel very at home. It's, it's funny because I was like, he must be at an OTB, but I'm like, I wonder where he has. Said, of course, it would be Sean Vorman. <laughs> He's got the four, the four screens. Uh, how has it been in Lexington? I'm sure you're looking forward to all the good racing we're going to see this weekend. Got in last night. We got a, some fun stuff coming up for the TRF. Folks will hear about it elsewhere in the show. But going to be hosting this watch party next week at um, at Mirror Twin on Thursday night. Can also be getting to do a VIP tour of the, the Second Chances facility in Blackburn. Not too far from here. Looking forward to those things. And then we've got an event, too, next Friday with, with our pals at TaylorMade. And, and, of course, the contest. we got all manner of uh, degenerates from all over the country descending on Keeneless Weekend. It's going to be a fun time. But you know one of my eyes, at least, is going to be on the Belmont simulcast feed at all times. Always has to be. Let's try and find some people, some winners for this pick six sequence for this Saturday. At Belmont Park. We're going to start race number five, a state bred M1X allowance, seven furlongs on the Widener turf. What would you like in this race, Pete? I made Highway Queen my top pick, and a lot of it came down to, to race design for me. I think that she's going to be in a terrific spot, second flight, no further back than mid-pack. And based on the late kick she's shown, I, I think she's going to have a chance to go by them all. And I always like giving extra credit to Joel Rosario Mounts when it's a situation where I think he can prove to be on the best closer. That's the case with Highway Queen. I did want a couple of backups. I was going to use the seven, write this down as a potential likely improver. Third start off the layoff here. And that was a tricky trip last time, I thought, being wide throughout. And then one other I was going to use as a backup was the nine uncle gem. Strong numbers overall and a potential candidate to be the best speed in this spot. I think there's a chance the speed's going to come back to them. But if it doesn't, uncle gem is the one I think has the best chance of, of hanging on of those front end runners. So that's how I see it. I was going to make the five and a and play the seven and nine as backups. Where were you here? I mean, we got to stop doing shows together because I am actually five, nine as A's. I'll, I'll start off real quick with Uncle Jem. Just Irad, Linda, we always know what Linda's bread and butter is. It's always going to be these type of seven furlongs, five and a half races. And just the last two races off the maiden win, uh, they've been three straight 70s. But I think at this point, I'm going to see a little bit of improvement more than a regression out of this one. And then we talked already Highway Queen. Joel on the turf, I think everyone knows when we talk trends just in any type of gambling atmosphere, Rosario is always going to be a bump up for me and for a lot. Steve Claceres, 11% on the year, but just nice to improvement. 
uh, since the maiden win and the claim 69 to a 74. That was with Santana who, unlike others, I'm not a fan of on the turf goes to Johnny now gets to, well, I think it's been a steady improvement on the jockey side as well. Fair enough. Fair enough. Did you have any backups you were going to mention too, or you were just going to get through with those two ways? No backups just to let's move on to race. Number six from Belmont park is the grade two sands point one and one eighth miles on the inner turf this time. What are we going with in here, Pete? I went back and forth in this race. I ultimately put the two Jordans Leo on top. Another one where race design comes into play, I think is going to get a good trip, maybe on the front, maybe just off. And I think Jordan's Leo still has room for upside late season in just the third third turf start. But the one that I, I considered putting on top based on the trip, I ultimately didn't because I was concerned that this distance might be a little sharp for Harajuku. But re-watching that trip, I backed last time and was a little bit like, you know, in, in the aftermath, I wouldn't have said, oh, that horse is definitely a vet back. But watching the trip, it was it was pretty tricky at a couple of different points, a little bit far back. But that pace really got pretty mellow in the middle of the race. And looking back at PPs, she did win on debut going seven. So maybe she'll be able to handle this mile and an eighth now in the care of Graham Motion. Another one I wanted for trip reasons was the number eight hour flash drive just got way too back against an even gallop in the pebbles. I think she can do better with a more positive ride. Uh, maybe can be up there with Jordan's Leo. So I'm hoping either the race holds together and we can get the two or the eight in there or that the three Harajuku will prove the best closer and come flying late. I had the two and the three as A's with the eight as a B in the featured race of the day. Where were you? Uh, for me, Harajuku is one, Again, this Philly, Ryan Moore, every, I know we've talked, I've been anti Aiden O'Brien, but now I wonder if I'm almost anti Ryan Moore at this point. And I feel like getting the train, the trainer switch now to Graham and also having junior, who I think is still the most underrated rider when it comes to turf routes. We talked about how well Joel is turf sprinting. I think this one, that last race, we talked about the trouble. I think coming out of this race, we know how good Graham is first time North America as well. The only other one I really needed in here was going to be the five, which is higher truth for Chad Brown. I just don't want to get beat by Chad Brown. <laughs> That's how it is. You know, we talk about it all the time. If there's five Chad Browns in a race, I have one friend who literally will just play all five Chads because he gets beat by the fourth. He just can't have, he just, he, he figures out a way to make his tickets nice and cheap, but always has to include most of the Chads. A, a mental health play, we call that. And, and I get you. I, 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 went back and forth about putting higher truth as a B. I eventually decided uh, perhaps foolishly that it might be a little sharp for, for higher truth, but probably a good include as a B at the, at the very least, because the horse just fits on figures and form. And you do have, uh, you know, you're in very hot hands with, uh, with Chad Brown at the moment. Let's move on to race number seven from Belmont park is the 30,000 and two L claimer. Not one is to life six and a half on the dirt. What are we liking this one, Pete? I like Hoopla, the two, getting back to the best surface, and I thought a pretty good chance to prove the best speed in a race without a whole lot of pace signed on. I did want to include a couple others as backups. The six, Cousin Andrew, I thought was a good candidate for the slight cutback today and the, taking the blinkers off. Might find more in the lane um, this time around after looking a bit punchless last time. The four American gentlemen was another I wanted to throw in there. Hasn't raced for a tag since that maiden claiming win and has the pace figures to be involved in the outset. Again, in a race where I don't see a lot of speed. So I think it could hold together and uh, you could see the two or the four get the job done. I was going to use them all as, uh, as I look at it again. I think I want to, I don't want to, it's more the kind of thing where I'll use two, six and four as A's. And then I will press hoopla a little bit. I do want some separation, but I also don't necessarily want to have a lone A in the spot. I think it's open enough. So for, for listing purposes, list them all as A's and you can make a note. I'm going to press the two a little bit. Got that. For me, cousin Andrew, Manny Franco, Peter Walder, just the, the race two back, the maiden win I have coming back as okay with uh, the show horse. He jumped up to actually maiden forties and actually won an off the turf event. The next race coming out fast pace fades a little bit. I, you know, the buyers are pretty much on top of each other. I hate when I see people say, oh, the 72 to a 70 decline. He dropped two points. It's pretty much the same exact buyer. Uh, Blinker's now coming off. I think this one maybe now gets a little bit of a sitting, more sitting trip, fourth or fifth, and can make that final run. Se second for me, litter box, Eric Cancel. Not having the best meet so far, but we know how good Eric is heating up toward the later part of the year as well with Gary Siaka, who's also having been off to a slow meet. These optional 16s, I just feel... 
have this horse going in the right direction, 52 to a 60 to a 70. I think a small jump up in class. This one can also show uh, the grit here to get this job done. Let's move on to race number eight. Maiden, or I'm sorry, claiming 30,000 and 12, one and one sixty miles on the inner turf. What do we like in this one, Pete? I put the six freedom machine as my top pick. This horse has shown some hard trying ability. That doesn't give up easily, has tactical speed, has an aggressive pilot in Saez, and I think on the drop could move up significantly. So I definitely want to have plenty of sixes on the tickets. At a price, another that I am going to leave in as an A is the four Cherokee Song. This one fits on the best bits of form. One of these horses who breaks poorly every time probably will break poorly again. Uh, but there is always the chance that uh, she gets away with a little bit more alacrity and could move up off that. But at any case, on the finishing ability she's shown, I'm going to leave her in the mix. And then Gabby Squared, this one was more of a backup for me. I'll use the six and the four as A's. We'll make Gabby Squared a B. One well at Monmouth coming off the shelf. That was not a fast pace. I'm hoping that's why that figure was maybe a little bit depressed. There could be another move forward for Gabby squared. I've got the six and four as A's and the seven as a B in race number eight. I'm kind of the same way with you. Freedom machine for me will be my top pick. Just the fact coming out of those allowance races, I feel that this one off the drop, always dangerous. And I think, you know, four seconds, two thirds, maybe a second is type, but when you get someone like Louie in the irons, I just feel like this one is always meant for the W. Also, we have for me Adele Cat for Jimmy Ryerson. Broke the maiden. Now comes in uh, into the claiming 40,000 N2L. Ran fine. Now we get a small drop. I just think this one, since you know, switching back and forth from the turf, I think this one's in proper form right now. And Cherokee Song, like you had also talked about, broke the maiden a while back under Benji and now comes in off a couple of starter allowances and now goes into the claiming ranks. That was off the turf. Looking for this one to make a little bit of a jump back. I'm not the biggest Luzzy fan, but he always seems to come a knocking with one long shot winner every single time. <laughs> or at least every single meet. Yeah, um, yeah I get it. I I, I think uh, it sounds so far, it sounds like a day where we're going to win or lose together. So under race number nine, state bread and one X allowance, six and a half on the dirt. What are we going for in here, Pete? I'm going with a horse that I think should be a bit of a price on top. The eight, Mosienko. Excuses for the last two runs. Very wide last time. Wrong surface, two back. Fits well off the race, three back. Should be a big price, and that's why I ended up reaching for this one on top. The one, quantitative reason, is another A. Chance to be the best speed. Bunch of numbers good enough. I don't have anything clever to say about the horse. I just think she makes sense. And then another I'll use is the seven, Mia Be a Star. Ran well for new connections off the trainer switch, and I think can contend with this bunch. Again, at what I hope will be a solid price. I just had questions about uh, a bunch of the horses I think are going to be towards the, the very uh, tippity top of the market here. And I might spread around with all three of those as A's, honestly. 817. 817 for Pete. I'm going to add the one as a B. I just don't want to get beat by this type of horse. Obviously, the last two races kind of came out of quote unquote nowhere. Now it goes into the Jeffrey Engelhart barn. We know how good the Engelharts are on dirt sprint. This one is not so good off the claim with a less than dollar ROI. So I'm going to use this one as a B. Also, Dylan Davis, as we talk about in the Redboard Rewind this week, with me and Matt Vakvolji, one of the most underrated jockeys right now, I think, on the Naira circuit. I am going to go with the number four, Cinderella's Claws, on top. Always not a big Chad Summers fan, but I feel just – going in the right direction, three straight improving races, obviously got uh, rained off the turf last time and showed a very, very good number. Benji Hernandez, I think will help with the price a little bit here going with Cinderella's cause on top. Yeah. I, I eventually, I looked long and hard at Cinderella's cause and I was, I, I tend to discount those uh, off the turf races, but you're absolutely right. I mean, if she runs to the number going to, going to be in the mix. If you if you know don't know it's Nairi, you will know it now. The final race list pick six is a state bred maiden forty thousand maiden claimer on the wide near seven furlongs on the turf. What are we like in here, Pete? In this wide open affair. I went with the five lemon taffy, another one of these runners I thought looked like a, a good candidate for the turn back and distance. And I thought the work tab for this runner looked notable as one that might be uh, ready to to break through at this point in the career. The seven, Escape with Friends. This is another one of these habitual slow breakers, but has flashed some ability. I like her chances to make an impact. Another whose chance would increase if the chronic breaking issues could be in the rear view. No idea if that will happen, but Escape with Friends has shown enough for me. 
The six, incontrovertible, had a tricky trip off the break on the wrong surface. Another one shown enough potential uh, in the past, especially in the turf debut, that I want to keep her on side in this spot. Going to hit all these late picks, five, seven, and six. Five, seven, and six for Pete. I'm going a little bit towards the outside with Phenomenal Woman. We just talked about Dylan Davis, Christoph Clement. This one dropping out of the maiden special weight ranks. It's just for me, Clement's so good off a long layoff. He's great maiden special weight to main claiming. It's definitely a trendy type of pick here for me. And also New York Dancer going right back to the well with Eric Cancel. I thought the race first time out, 56. If you go by me and go as a James Quinn learner, uh, we should see about eight, 10 points of improvement. That puts him right or puts her right in the mix. I don't mind either of those as backups for the record for, for me. They, they, I looked at both long and hard and I like your angles on each one. That is all the time we have today on the in the money players podcast, almost said red board rewind. Got to get <laughs> goes straight, but uh, thank you so much Pete, for coming on. Happy to uh, be a guest host and, you know, do it live as well. And in, in color and in person. Good stuff, my friend. PTF one more time. I want to remind folks that next Thursday, October 21st, the final table of Horse Player Happy Hour will have 10 players left. And then there were 10, and one of them will win a $10,000 Breeders' Cup betting challenge seat. We'll probably do it like we did this week. It'll probably be a live stream from three to five. We want you to join that live stream, ask questions, meet the competitors. It's going to be a lot of fun. And pretty darn sure we're going to be able to be running one more $189 BCBC qualifier on the same set of races so you can win your way in while you watch us uh, do our thing at the final table. It's going to be a lot of fun. And best of all, the entire house cut on that 189 it goes to our aftercare charities, Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance and the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation. So you're supporting a great cause and having some fun along the way, sending a message to our great friends at the Breeders' Cup that players appreciate these kind of initiatives and greatly increasing the chance that we can do Horse Player Happy Hour again next year as well. To sign up for that game, it'll probably go live latest Tuesday next week, but horseplayers.com is the place to go and check it out. If you're following me on social media, I'll send out the link there. But uh, just keep it in mind for next Thursday, our fourth and final midweek BCBC qualifier and the final table all happening at the same time. The URL to remember horseplayers.com. I want to thank you, all the wonderful listeners and the special guests for coming on this week's episode of the In the Money Players podcast. I want to thank Scotty McKeever from Equine Edge, Drew Coatney, PTF, Klaus Ebner, all for coming on and giving their great insight. This show has been a production of In the Money Media. In the Money Media's president is Pierre Thomas Fornatel. Our chief creative officer is Jonathan Kinchin. Our In the Money Media business manager is Drew Coatney. I'm Spencer Luganbuehl, and we will see you next time.